By now, he doesn't need an introduction, but I'll do that anyway. I'm Steven Taylor. This is Robert Venable, good friend of mine, and we're going to be talking more about miking uh, the drums because you hear from me all the time about playing the drums and tips for drumming, but you don't often hear the mechanics of miking, mainly because that's not my job. Like, my job has always been I'm a player, and I've expressed this with Robert. He's like, what do you think about it? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe that's a good <laughs> mic placement, you know. He knows what he's talking about whenever it comes to the recording side of things. He's engineered and produced for some huge names. He's very good at what he does, and I'm super excited that he is wanting to, you know, share some stuff with you guys. So we're going to be talking about... So you sent me a message saying, hey, people are asking me all the time, how do I mic up my toms and make them sound good in the recording studio? Simple. Three steps on how to do that. Let's head over to the studio and check it out. The toms. Let's talk about the toms. Um, now, it's really the same for these... These tips you're gonna give, they're the same really for all toms, right? Yeah, it's, absolutely. Okay, so uh, so when we're talking about this, the miking, all of that, it, it's gonna it's gonna go for any of your toms. It's not just the high tom. So you, you start out, man. Awesome, cool. So a lot like kick drum and snare drum, if you've watched those videos already, um, this is gonna be pretty follow suit with that. Um, a brand new head, tuned nicely all around, top and bottom, make it sound great. So I'm, I'm seeing a pattern here, like, <laughs> You, you, you need good heads when you go into the studio. If you're gonna mic these things up, those mics pick up everything. So you need a, you need a good bass to start from. Good, get a good drum head and then tune it up correctly. Now, there's different ways you can tune it, right? You can tune it to where the drum obviously has more fall, uh, where the drum is, is deader, you can you can yep. mute it up. There's all different ways. Depends on the song, depends on the genre, depends yeah. on what your personal tastes and preferences are. Um, but yeah, you're going to want it tuned to where you want it. And as soon as it sounds good in your ear, to your ears in the room, then you try to capture it with the microphone. I've, I've been in sessions where we take whole days to get drum sounds. It's, not, yeah. you know, it's not something that is glossed over. The, 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 we've spent days and days on end getting a good drum sound to record one three-minute track. You know? And if you're not the guy to tune drums, if you're just not that guy and you don't have an ear for it, you just get frustrated and just want to throw something, get somebody else to do it. Hire somebody. Pay somebody in um, root beer. Yeah. Say, hey, I'll give you a six pack of root beer if you want to come tune my drums. Robert, I'll come tune your drums for root beer if you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheapest drum tuner. Done. Done. All right, so what's the next tip? After, after uh, getting a good drum head and tuning, what's you need the next to tip? choose the right microphone for the job. Again, you're going to want a microphone that's not going to pick up the bleed from cymbals okay. or too much snare drum or kick drum when you're aiming it at the tom. Okay. So I have this one. Um, Audix makes it D6. It's the same one I happen to use on the inside of the kick drum. I think it's just carved out just right for toms. Top toms, bottom toms, high toms, low toms, right. kick drums. I love the way it sounds. So this Audix D6, I will throw on here. Actually, there are a couple ways to place it on here. But one that I like to use, this little clip will actually clip it onto the rim here. Now, some people will say, you are an idiot. Why are you doing that in the studio? That's made for live uses. Right. Um, there's a couple of reasons, and you might think I'm crazy, but I kind of think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you, you kind of have made a, a very good living at this for quite some time, so we'll, I'll just say I'll listen to you, Robert. Sure, so here's, here's, here's my thing. This is why I like this. One, it's clearing out some room for cymbal stands. I hate having another stand here to hold a microphone up. It's just going to get in the way and have cables right. hanging down, all this kind of stuff already. Right. Let's make some room. But two, when you hit a drum, the head vibrates, and that's what makes the sound, right? Right. Okay, we're all in agreement with that. When you hit a drum, especially rack toms, if they're mounted with like a rims hardware like this or something that's not too stationary, look at this. The drum moves a little bit. Right. And it's not moving much. It's moving, you know, fractions of an inch, but it's moving. But look what's moving with it, this microphone. Right. So when this microphone is moving up and down with the tom, it's as if it's staying still and just capturing the vibrations from the head. Okay, cool. So if this were still on a stationary stand over here and your drum was vibrating, there are minuscule amounts of volume changes happening, plus phase issues. So you're hearing wah, 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 wah. Right. Instead of in a steady Instead sound. of bong. Right. You know what I mean? So I think in my head, and that could be crazy, that when it vibrates with the drum, it's staying more stationary and just capturing more of the head sound and less of the volume of the drum moving up and down. You could be crazy, but with the roster of people you work with, <laughs> I'll say you're not crazy. You probably know what you're doing. So that's why I like this. I okay. like this. And it, and it stays pretty stable. Um, and that brings me to my next point, where I'm aiming this thing. Okay. Now, if you aim it right at the center, where you're planning on hitting the drum, where your stick hits the drum head, right here, if you're aiming it right there, you're going to get a lot of this body of the drum. Okay. It's going to sound great. You're going to get the attack from the stick hit. If you want a little bit more tone or it's too fat for you, you can aim it down a little bit. 
Again, I have it about three fingers, maybe a little bit more, above the head of the drum okay. to give it room to breathe, make right. room blossom. Right. So you're not hearing too much boom. You're not hearing boom. It's right, right in the middle. Okay. And uh, it, I get that stick click that I like from, from the attack, and I get some of that resonance of the head just vibrating. Yeah. Now, a lot of engineers will mic up the bottom of the toms. Okay. I don't. Um, just my personal preference. I think if you tune the drum just right, you can hear a lot of that resonance coming through the drum this way. Right. And I haven't had an issue. What you're lacking from that, you can pick up with the rooms and overhead mics, which we'll cover in a minute, in a different video. Right. And, and this all goes to say this is, pers this is also personal preference. Just because it's Robert's preference doesn't mean it has to be yours. Absolutely. Experiment in the studio. That's one of the funnest things about the studio for me is yeah. experiment. If you want to open drum, if you want to, you know, if you want to put a newspaper on it and duct tape that down there, like experiment with sounds. And really these microphones are just there to, to capture those sounds. Sure. You know? And if you get into the control room and you're listening to your sounds and this tom is ringing too much, Put, um, there's millions of different products. Oh, what yeah, kind of products absolutely. do you use? Uh, I use drum tacks. I yeah. use a lot of gaff tape. <laughs> absolutely. Some people throw a wallet on their drums. Yeah. Some people, you know, tape stuff down, newspaper, paper towels, whatever you need to do. When it sounds good in the microphone, it's going to sound great in the recording. Um, gives the engineer, whoever's mixing it, if it's yourself or somebody else, a lot of room to work with. I personally like my toms to ring out, and you can shorten it later in the mix if you need to. If it's too long of a decay in the room, then you have to dampen it a little bit. You can change the mic placement a little bit, or like I said, drum tacks or the wallet or duct tape or whatever you need um, just to kind of kill some of the vibration, top or bottom head. Hopefully the next time you're in the studio, these tips will help you get better times out. I know I've learned something just by kind of hanging out and being around Robert. Mainly it's uh, like... Keep your distance. <laughs> Mainly it's keep your distance from Robert <laughs> and all people associated with him. The link to Robert's site, learnhowtorecord.com, is below. Jump on his email list. I'm on his email list. He's got tons of great tips about recording. This has helped you. Maybe share it with another musician or drummer you think it might help. And hit that thumbs up button on your way out. But no matter what you do, I'll see you here in the next video where we're gonna talk about overheads, room o mics. Overheads, room mic, which have a huge deal to do with, with your Absolutely. overall drum sound. Probably so most of it. Be tuning back in next week, that's what's gonna be happening.